Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss Norman and in today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you about four things that I didn't like about the OMS CS program. I think in my other videos, I focus a lot on the positive aspects of the OMS CS program and like how much you learn in the OMS CS program, um, but that doesn't mean that the program is without flaws. So I wanted to make a short video to outline four things that came to mind uh, when thinking about things that I think the OMS CS program uh, could improve. And granted, some of these items are more so characteristics of just online courses in general. Um, they're not, I, I don't think they're things that would be specific to OMSCS. I think you would probably find uh, a couple of these items in other online programs or in other online courses in general. And the first item on my list, I think is one of those items which isn't necessarily specific to the OMSCS uh, program. It's more of a characteristic of just online uh, programs and online courses in general. And that's the lack of synchronous interaction that you get with the instructor of a particular course. The majority of communication happens asynchronously through the uh, student forum Piazza. You can get some synchronous communication through Slack with the TAs because the TAs typically monitor OMSCS uh, Slack courses, but the TAs themselves are oftentimes uh, OMSCS students in addition to being TAs, and they're TAs for uh, hundreds of students per class. The second thing that I didn't like was the course lecture videos for OMSCS courses. They're hosted on Udacity, and uh, for most of the courses, the course lecture videos are way too high level for you to really grasp uh, the material you have to supplement the course lecture videos with either readings or uh, what I did most of the time was supplementing it with YouTube videos. I would just try and find a YouTube video related to the topic that I was currently learning in the course and, uh, and that would be like my primary resource. But the course lecture videos just really are not enough to, you couldn't just watch a lecture video and be like, okay, I understand the topic now. The third thing that I don't like about the OMSCS program is again, I think a characteristic of maybe online programs and it's probably hard to, um, it's probably hard to like mitigate this uh, particular item, but it's the fact that when you enter the program, it's really kind of a sink or swim type situation. You're expected to learn uh, very independently. Like I said in my last point, the course lecture videos are very high level and most of the material that you're given just doesn't really um, just doesn't really uh, give you enough substance to uh, to learn and absorb the material. The course coding projects are probably the best resource that they give you to learn the uh, learn the material in the course. But if you're struggling in the program like I did at the beginning and pretty much throughout the entire program, there aren't a lot of solid resources for you to lean on. Uh, if you're struggling, like the primary resource that you can depend on to ask questions is typically the, the student forum in Piazza or Slack. And not everyone is, is present in Slack, not all the students, not all of the TAs. Um, so you may or may not get your uh, question answered in Slack. And uh, you can get really good answers from students and TAs in Piazza, but that doesn't happen all the time. And on top of that, it's uh, Piazza is asynchronous communication. And I think there's something to be said about the benefit and the value of synchronous communication over asynchronous, where you can sit down with someone and have a conversation and talk through uh, you know, some material in the course that you don't understand. And the last thing that I didn't like about the OMSCS program was OMSCS advising. I'm speaking from my personal experience, but uh, throughout the program, I didn't really have a good experience with OMSCS advising. And maybe this is a characteristic of online programs in general, where you know the advisors have to advise uh, hundreds of students. So that kind of uh, hurts the individual experience of each student because one advisor is responsible for hundreds of students. And I don't feel like they gave really great answers when I would reach out to advising with questions. A lot of the times when I would um, uh, query OMSCS advising for questions, my res the response that I would get would be like essentially a copy and paste uh, from uh, an excerpt from like some OMSCS uh, or Georgia Tech academic policy document. 
And a good example of my experience was uh, in the beginning of the program, I, I'd mentioned in my other video that I failed uh, the first two courses in the program. I was put on academic probation where if I got a C in any course uh, while on academic probation, I was kicked out of the program. And it took me three years to bring my GPA up to a 2.9. And the requirement for graduation is a 3.0. And so I reached out to OMSCS Advising to see like how I could uh, potentially graduate on time. And on time basically meaning like once I finished the required number of credit hours, I wanted to graduate at that point and not have to take additional classes to bring my GPA up, uh, my GPA up to a 3.0. And when I reached out to advising, they basically said there is no other way. You just have to keep making A's uh, until you reach a 3.0 GPA. And uh, I would have had to take one additional course um, and made an A in that course to reach a 3.0 GPA. And I did some research on my own and I found guidelines under the petition of faculty which said that I could petition to graduate with a GPA under the 3.0 requirement. And that was information that uh, I would have expected my advisor to, to know and uh, provide to me. And instead I had to, I had to go out and research it myself and I found uh, that information myself. And if I hadn't found that document, if I hadn't found those guidelines, I would have ended up taking an additional class. And maybe I would have gotten an A on it, maybe I wouldn't have. Um, but it saved me essentially, at a minimum, uh, submitting that petition saved me four months of additional work and it saved me money because I didn't have to take an extra class. So those are the four things that I didn't really like about the OMSCS program. Again, overall, I had a, a great experience uh, in the OMSCS program, and I learned a lot, but I thought it would be good to point out a few things that just kind of uh, I didn't really have a good experience with uh, during OMSCS. If you've had a different experience uh, with the items that you know I listed in this video, please let me know in the comments. Or if you have any questions or feedback, also uh, please let me know in the comments. And if you like the video, uh, please consider throwing a like and subscribing to the channel for more videos. Thanks for watching.